welcome to the teething and good oral health habits in children webinar. I am so excited about this webinar as it hits really close to home. And I'm sure you have many, many questions. You can post it in the chat. We have other mommies monitoring the thread. Now today, I'd like to introduce to you Dr. Karin van den Berg from Interke Castlegate, who's been practicing since 1993. She is compassionate and takes the time to provide each patient with the best possible dental care. She loves children and has four daughters of her own. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Van den Berg, and welcome. Hi, thank you, Veronique. Yes. Now, doctor, what are the first signs of teething and how long does it take for the tooth to break through the gums? Veronique, it, it all differs from patient to from, from child to child, but usually um, there's an increase in drilling. Yeah, a lot of drilling takes place. The gums get thicker, it's swollen, it gets red. You can even see little tooth buds, white buds, where the tooth are trying to push through. They start biting everything. Yeah, I, I remember my daughter even bit my shoulder when she was eating. Um, they get very clingy and whiny. You can immediately, there's a, you can detect a difference immediately. They can get the rosy red cheeks from all the inflammation and all the blood flow towards the inflammated areas. They get sleep problems. They can even refuse food and they start pulling on their ears because um, the nerves are connected with the ears and the, and the gums. So that's normally the, the signs that you see. Usually the symptoms start about three days, two to three days before the teeth erupts. The erupt, but then and usually stops about two to three days afterwards. But keep in mind, you've got 20 baby teeth. So if they don't come out simultaneously, that this can happen 20 times. Um, some children smile and you see they've got a new tooth and other children doesn't, it's not so easy. So it all depends on the individual child that, um, yes. Thank you, doctor. Now, sometimes symptoms that parents think are signs of teething are actually signs of illness or infection. One of the mummies joining us today, Mulalo Radilani, asked, my daughter is five months and one week old. She had a fever and one eye is irritable. Is this a sign of teething? Now, doctor, is it a myth or a fact? Do babies get sick when teething? Is a high fever, vomiting, vomiting, diarrhea, or in Mulalo's baby's case, an irritable eye normal during teething? In, in her case, with a baby, I think that baby is only five months old. It is a little bit uncommon because usually it's when the canines erupt, the upper canines erupt. If you the canines that, uh, are the ones that you if you count from the from the middle, it's one, two, three, the third one. And they usually are up 16 to 22 months. So it, with, with teething, it's so difficult because um, you can get various um, symptoms. But and the thing there is you have to, you know your child. So I always tell the mothers, go on your gut feel. If you, fevers, fever, fever with teething normally wouldn't get more than 37.5, 37.7. And if it keeps longer than two to three days, and even with a five-month-old baby, I'll be very cautious. Um, rather take it, you know, rather have to take it to the doctor and have a look. Um, it can be teeth, but I don't, I don't think so. I don't. Um, if it's not a canine erupting 16 to 22 months, I would be, I would be cautious. You know, I always tell mothers rather take. A baby one time too many to the doctor than one time, you know, and even if so that would be my, um, yeah. And the other thing is, have a look. Is there any other teething signs? You know, is the gum swollen? Does the, dro the, the drooling increase? Is there any other signs that you can see that it's teething? It can be teething, but yeah, that's the, that would be my um, suggestion. Thank you. Thanks for the clarity on that, doctor. Now, there's a variety of remedies and treatments to soothe a teething baby. Amber necklaces available at most pharmacies 
uh, a trend amongst, amongst young mummies today. What is your advice when it comes to soothing a teething baby and what treatments should parents avoid, doctor? Yeah, I did a bit of research on the amber uh, beads. I would, I would be cautious with the amber beads because there's always the, the hazard of choking. Okay? So if that necklace breaks and one of those little beads gets down a throat, you know, the, for, for choking is we take a toilet roll. Anything that can go down a toilet roll is a, is a choking hazard. So that's quite, um, so I would, I would, I won't, I, I won't suggest uh, uh, amber beads. Um, personally, I, and I also won't recommend any teething gels or anything like that. Some of the ingredients in the teething gels is, is for example, benzocaine, uh, which is a, a, a local, it's a topical anesthetic. And you can have um, allergic reactions and stuff to that. What I would suggest is giving them one of those teething rings Put it in the put it in the um, a, a, the fridge, also not the freezer, because you can actually give them frostbite when they when they hold it in their hands. Um, that's one of the things I would suggest. And then if if it really is bad, give something like paracetamol. Okay? Also have a look at the dosage. So what you can give per kilogram, um, give that. And after I would I would wait about. 30 minutes after the paracetamol and then give them something cold. You can even get that feeders as well where it's that gauze where you can put some frozen um, uh, uh, fruit or something in just to soothe them and lots of TLC and yeah because they, they're, not having, they're not having a great time when they are teething. That would be my yes. Thank you so much doctor. Now Oral health is all about forming good habits, which is easier said than done when dealing with the strong will of a toddler. Now, Michelle Katia shared her concern about her 14-month-old son, who on some days refuses to brush his teeth or get assistance from his parents. How should parents take care of their baby or toddler's new teeth? I've been there, been there, done that. Um, Try to establish a very good oral hygiene routine from early, early on. Okay? Children thrive on routine. So if you have a routine at the same time, you do the same things, and lead by example, they like to mimic. So if you brush your teeth, let them, you let them brush their teeth. And uh, try positive ways to encourage them. Okay? For example, I remember we had a chart up in the bathroom and we had stars that we rewarded if you brush your teeth. If you have like 20 stars, then you can get this or you know, get a reward. So try to get it in a positive way. But I was non-negotiable about toothbrushing. It's so important. In the end, um, you know what's best for your child. So go for it. There's, there's, a, um, there's a toothpaste, al Gideon. Okay? You can buy it at uh, any of the pharmacies. It's a plug disclosing toothpaste. And it's, it's actually, it's grass, grass, grass green. So if they brush with that, and it's actually, this is more now for your more toddler, more older toddlers, that they, if they brush that and they rinse, then they can actually see it discloses where the plug is. And it's also good for, for the parents to see where they can maybe help a little bit. But then, you know, show them in the get Get them interactive. Show them in the mirror where they can see what's going on, and then they can, you know, try and try and do that. Yes. Thank you, doctor. Now, reading about fluoride toothpaste and seeing the variety of children's toothpaste on the shelves can make one feel overwhelmed when trying to find the best fit for your child's age. When should toddlers start using fluoride toothpaste, and how much fluoride is toxic, doctor? Okay, okay. Um, there's a lot of controversy about fluoride. I'm for fluoride. Most of the dentists are for fluoride. Um, the American Dental Association as well. Um, so what, what, what we suggest is before the teeth appear in the mouth, you wipe the mouth with a, with a wet gauze and clean the mouth out. As soon as the first tooth appears, 
we suggest, uh, it's my opinion, that I suggest that you start using a fluoride toothpaste. Um, the, the range of the fluoride, they say, they say that children under the age of three years um, should have like a, only a smear of toothpaste um, in the mouth. And that must be um, 100, um, that, what is that? I just want to get that unit. It's a hundred, um, uh, but per day. Eh? That's that's the one, the unit that you use. But it's on the it's on the toothpaste. And children older than three years old must have like 1.3, 1.5 um, of those units of um, fluoride per day. And with a child over the age of three, you take the amount of pee. And twice daily, you brush with that and encourage them to rinse and to spit out. That is I am I am for all fluoride. There is a fluoride. Um, I think it's Pure Beginnings, which is a uh, fluoride-free toothpaste that you can also start using. But you know what? Fluoride makes the teeth stronger. It actually makes the teeth stronger. It reverses the early stages of acid damage by remineralizing the areas that have been, um, that have been um, uh, damaged by decay, that where decay has started. So, yeah, I'm, I'm for fluoride. I'm for fluoride. Thank, thank you so much, doctor. Um, mommies, I'd just like to let you know that if you have any questions, please feel free to share them with us in the chat. Dr. Fandenberg will answer a few of your questions after the session. Now, doctor, please share with us a bit more about dental sealants and at what age children can get these sealants. Yeah, one thing I want to tell parents, because they don't, they don't always know this, your first uh, permanent molars usually erupt about the age, they can start as, as young as four and a half, but usually it's about five and a half, six and a half years old. And that's, if you count from the front, it's the sixth tube, the sixth tube appearing at the back. So you've got, your, you've got 20 baby teeth, 10 at the bottom, 10 at the top, and then the, the sixth one appearing is your first permanent molar, which not all parents realize that that is a permanent tube that you want to take with you to your old age home someday. So we usually seal those ones first. We don't really seal baby teeth. They are more flat. A lot of these first molars, especially when they are um, newly erupted, have very deep fissure or grooves. And that's where you, when you eat sugar or anything, you bite it in there and that causes a cavity. So it's a very good preventative measure that we do to try and save the, the teeth, you know, to, to have them for always and always and always. So um, the only thing is we, we need... The, the material that we use is very moisture sensitive. So um, we need good moisture control when we do it. And we also need good cooperation from the child to do it. Because what we do is we, we etch the tooth with the etchant and then we blow it and then we wash it and we blow it dry. And then we put the sealant and we put a light on it to cure it. Um, so if we can get the child's cooperation we usually seal it around about six, and then I try to seal all the permanent teeth that comes out. But you can only seal it if there's not a cavity or a filling or anything like that. So if you look in the mouth and there's still a gum flap at the back of the tooth, it's very difficult to seal it. So we usually wait till it's far enough erupted that we can seal it without any moisture contaminating the material. That's usually what we do. It's very good. I would really, really recommend you take your child to seal those back. It really, really works. Thank you, doctor. Um, a few of the mommies sent through questions about delays in teething. Kelasani in Kube's son had his first tooth at seven months, but at nine months, Stoney has one tooth. Kesha's daughter only received her first two teeth at 13 months. And Mkoti Selowani has a 15-month-old daughter who only got her first upper tooth two weeks ago, and one tooth at the bottom gum is now erupting. Doctor, what are the causes 
of delay in teething? Is it normal? And when should we, uh, as parents, be concerned and consult a dentist about these delays? It, it, there's such a big range. Um, it differs in all children. My, my second daughter only had her first teeth at 14 months. And um, it, it differs. It differs. Usually with the baby teeth, we are not that concerned. Um, it, it's a, there's a little bit of a, a, you have to look at the diet. You can't give them, you know, solid, solid food. But, I mean, babies chew anything with their gums as well. So um, we usually more concerned when the permanent teeth um, don't, don't erupt. So it's, you look at genetics. Genetics play a role. Um, you, uh, there's sometimes you've got like an extra tooth. We call it a supernumerary tooth. If there's an extra tooth, then it blocks some of the teeth to come out. But we usually don't have that much problem with baby teeth. I know mommies and daddies get very, um, they get very, um, um, uh, what do you mean word? Um, Concerned. Concerned, yeah, about teeth not erupting, but just nature. Nature has a way of sorting itself out if you give it a little bit of time. So, um, sometimes we get an eruption system, not really in um, in baby teeth, where the where the tooth tries to break through the gum, but it it, it, it it's difficult and it makes like a little, almost like a bluish cyst around the tooth and then if it's a problem then we just we just give it a little cut and it comes through but that's usually more with your permanent than with the baby and i think we as parents don't always help ourselves by googling because when you start yeah. googling yeah. you'll start fearing it should be yeah. like at 15 yeah. months it's too late etc but okay yeah. thanks for clarifying for us doctor but, um, but again but again it's your child you know your child Trust your gut feel. You are the mother. If you think you must take this child to a professional and have it looked at, do. But if you if you get that feeling, rather take rather take the child. Definitely. Thank you, doctor. Now, mommies, um, I see a few of you has posted um, some questions in the chat. We're gonna go over to Shay. Um, doctor, she asks, my daughter is 16 months old and she has two teeth. But she has been in so much pain now, and I can get a feeling that the other teeth are wanting to come out, but her gums are hard. Is there anything I can do to help her with the pain management? She has grommets put in and was having ear problems when she got her first tooth, and that was in May. Is there anything Shay can do to assist? The only thing, no, I'm, I'm not very into the medicine there. I always try to do it the natural ways. I would I would go the paracetamol route, but you also can't do that for too, too long. Go the paracetamol route and then if that doesn't work, I would rather take the take it to a professional. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. We've also got Stephanie Toft and she wants to know how long does it take for a tooth to get to erupt and how long do we give meds? She says she's giving Panado and Nurofen as prescribed by her pediatrician. Yes, yes. Usually, usually the symptoms start about two to three days before it erupts, and it usually ends about two to three days after the tooth has erupted. But that can also differ from child to child. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, doctor. We've also got Veronique from Pretoria. She says, good afternoon. My baby is 20 months and his teeth are rotten. He's breastfeeding, never been built, bottle fed. What could be the problem? He has 12 teeth and they are discolored and broken. He is breastfeeding and he is on solids. That's from Ntabi Singh Nteli. Okay, okay. So I, I think the dentist must have a look and see what's going on. There can be a malformation of the the uh, the um, enamel of the baby teeth. That can be the thing. The solid food foods that is on is there a lot of sugar or not? Because sugar is a is a big big thing with with this. Um, but one must have a look. I would rather have a look, and one must have those teeth those teeth fixed. 
Okay. We've also got a class and she says, hi there, my son is three months now and I think he's teething. Um, everything is going to the mouth and he tries to chew everything. And he also salivates a lot, like you said earlier, doctor. You can also see a few white buds on his gums. Is it, is it normal to start teething this early, three months? It can start early as three months, yes, yes. Yes, it's exceptional, but it can start as early as three months, and it's got all the symptoms. So, yes. Okay. Um, we've got Mponiana Diale. Some, oh, sorry, some, Dr. Yes? Some, some, some babies are even born with teeth. Yeah. Well, I, I've, read, I've read that on Google, Doctor, but I've never actually had someone confirm it until today. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, we've also got Mponiana Diale. She says, my daughter got her first two teeth at 13 months, and since then, nothing. And now she's 17 months old. Is there cause for concern? If, is she, if she's healthy and the gum looks okay, you can always bring her in and have a look, but I, I wouldn't be too concerned. Okay. Doctor, um, we have got one of the mummies who would like to ask you a direct question. Mulalo, uh, you can unmute yourself and direct your question to Dr. Vandenberg. Hello, doctor. How are you? Hi, fine and you. Um, Hi, so Mulalo. I just want to ask if the five months uh, daughter, I've got a five months daughter. Yes. I think she's teething now because she's. Mulalo, can you speak up? Hello. Yes. She's, she's five I think months. I five months old i think she's still thing but the problem is the uh, right eye is always painful and itching when when did the when did this start now it's four days for four days and yeah is, is the gum is the gum swollen it seems like it's eating because she eats ev like she eats everything. Um, usually, usually we get uh, uh, we usually we get eye infections if the not usually but sometimes we get eye infections when the canines erupt, which is a little bit weird for a baby of five months because usually our upper canines erupt at the age of about 16 to 22 months. So I would suggest you rather have that checked out, have the eye checked out. Also, I have to go to... Is the, is the, the, is the, yeah, is the eye tearing or not? Sorry? Is, is there more tears in the eye or not? Not, just pass. Just pass. No, I, if there's pass, I would rather take that baby to the to the pediatrician. Yes, or the oh. ophthalmologist. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Malala. Thank you, Doctor. Um, now we've also got Cassandra from Century City, and she wants to know: once your baby starts teething, is it necessary to start weaning them um, from the bottle? She's concerned that her baby drinking the bottle might cause skewness um, in teeth what's the proper age to wean um, a teething baby from a bottle what we usually with dummies and thumb sucking and bottles usually up to the age of three we still see as normal after the age of three not because your your upper jaw actually grows towards the front and you've got a you've got an open bite and stuff so you can cause lots of um orthodontic treatment um, and problems later on. So up to the age of three, we still see it as normal for um, babies to drink bottle and to and to suck on a, on, on their thumbs or even a, a cloth or, or a dummy. But after the age of three, uh, we would not recommend that they that they do that. With the bottle, 
It's so important not to let them lie at night with a bottle in their mouth. We, we've got, we've got a, a thing that we call baby bottle caries is where the, the milk lies in the mouth. So the upper, the upper incisors get rotten and the bottom incisors on the outside get rotten because of the milk lying there. And milk has got sugar because of the milk lying there during the night and there's no saliva and there's no movement of the tongue or the lips to wipe it clean or anything. So that's a no-no. That's a big no-no. And we see that, we see that quite often. Okay. And are you specifically referring to um, a baby sleeping with a bottle in his or her yes. mouth during the course yes. of the night? During so, the course of the night uh -huh. or even with cool drink? during the course of the night. So a baby who is bottle fed, um, say during a certain section of the evening, if they have their bottle, like say at 12 o'clock, um, they drink it and they're done with it. Is that okay, doctor? Or should we ref refrain from bottle feeding in the evenings at all costs? You, you, can't, you can't. I mean, if you're not breastfeeding, then you are bottle feeding. <laughs> so, so been they done that? No, no, but the thing is, if, if the milk mustn't lie against the tooth for the whole evening without being disturbed because it's lying there, no tongue movement, no, you know, there's no movement, they don't speak anything. So that, that causes a lot of problems, yes. And and that's um, no, no, sorry, continue. It's, it's the sugar in the milk that's what's causing the problem. Okay. And it's, it's also interesting because I, I heard earlier you um, spoke about sucking thumb and that was Anne from Boxburg's um, next question. She wanted to know if children who suck their thumbs past a certain age, does it cause buck teeth or skew yes. teeth? Yes. Does it? And we go back to that rule of three years. After three years, it causes, it causes, um, it causes problems, yes. Okay. Um, and then one of the other mummies um, from Century City, Cassandra, wanted to know, is there a certain sequence um, for the teeth to erupt? Is it always the bottom two first and then the upper two? Or does it vary and depend um, from child to child? Most of the time, it's the bottom two first and then the upper two and then the upper laterals, the number twos and then the lower laterals, and then the upper canines, lower canines, and then upper first molar, and then lower first molar, lower second molar, upper. But, again, somebody, some, some are curly, some are straight, some are blonde, some, you know, it's one of those things. It can, it can differ, it can differ. But that's usually the sequence that they come out. Yeah, very true, Doctor. Um, we also have another question here from um, Renilwe Motsamai. Um, she says, my daughter is a 13-month-old, premature baby, she was, but she has not started teething yet. Is this an issue, doctor? Um, 13 months, no, no, no. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too concerned, no. Okay. And the fact that the baby was premature would also not have any um, play or on that i'm going to be real honest i don't know that one i'll have to find out for you <laughs> <laughs> okay doctor. um well mommies it seems that we have come to the end of our session today uh dr kareen i would like to thank you for an insightful webinar we appreciate your time and expertise immensely a big, big thank you to all the mommies who joined us today. You'll receive a copy of this webinar and an invitation to our next webinar in your inbox soon. And I'd just like to remind you to please remember there's no way to be a perfect mother, but a million ways to be a good one. Until next time, goodbye.